Hello there DFSers and welcome again to another video. We are going to be going over today um, kind of some ideas and hints and helpful tips on how to price some of your goods for sale. I know a, a lot of people have asked, has been asking lately in DFS chat how much does this go for and things like that because they're setting up their stalls. They're you know, especially with the main market moving and a lot more rentals becoming available at it, a lot of people have been really trying to find that good price to sell their goods at. You know, you want to make sure you're not selling too low and bringing the overall price down or selling too high and just never getting anything sold. So it can be really hard to find that nice good number that you can sell at a decent rate but maybe not sell out immediately even though sometimes it's kind of it can be nice to sell out immediately depending on what your needs are so we're going to kind of go over some hints on this and this was another video that was suggested to kind of go over and cover as well um, so what we are going to do is as you can see I'm standing in one of the rows for the main market and we're kind of going to kind of do this here. Now I have turned friends friends only friends only on so that way you're only going to see like you'll see Wolf you see him walking there in the far long distance there. Um and so if I do happen to get you on here I'm sorry you know at the very least we won't be able to see your chat cuz I do have that turned off. So we are good to go. Now one of the biggest things that I will tell people is go to different markets. Like one of the reasons I like to come here to the main market is so many people rent here. Let me get my cam up here kind of in the sky. If you take a look, we have all this space here and these each one of these stalls right here is rented. The rules here were always you can rent up to two up to two stalls but most people don't have to rent it we only rented one so as you can see there's a lot of sellers here so that's why I always usually go to the main market first and then I will branch out especially if I don't find what I'm looking for now this market here is on the community sim so if you happen to live on the community sim sim it's just a hop skip and a jump for you guys now Another one of my favorite tools I use, especially when I am browsing for prices, is Area Search. You can find it if you use Firestorm. You just go to World here. It's kind of towards the bottom. It's between Photo and Video and, and Sound Explorer. You just click on Area Search. And you look up here. Now, some of the... Let's find something kind of common. Let's look here. Right next to me, I see an agave basket. So let's look for agave. So we type in agave here. Now most people who do have like boxes down like this, if you were to look at it, look at its name, it does have agave in its name. Most of our vendor scripts will change the name of the object to whatever it's selling. So that's why I go, I do it this way. So let's hit search. And as you can tell, we have quite a few options here. So what we do is we right click, we're gonna use the first one, we right click and click zoom to. So I always minimize and let's take a look here. We'll go here. So for instance, they sell theirs for five L's. As you notice the one store right here that we're sitting by, again, five L's. So, so far, at least with two two vendors, we are seeing a sell price of five. Some of the scripts will put the price here in the description. So, like we see this basket here is five. This basket here is five. Let's go to this. That's Apple. Well, let's go to that one because the name is Agave. So, let's go to it. Let's see if it's really Apple or Agave baskets. Let's minimize it. It looks like it's actually agave baskets, and it is. They're selling theirs for three L's. So, so far we've had two at five, one at three. 
So what you would want to do is kind of take that average. Now let's grab one more because we see another person here sells it at six. So let's go to the next one down and let's go zoom in on hers. So we see a basket at five L's. So we're kind of getting that idea. Oh wait, I think that's, no, that's the one right next to us. We already looked at that one. So let's go back to area search. Let's pick the next one down when we haven't looked at yet. So right here, this one's at two L's. So we've now seen one at two, one at three, and several at five, and then one at six. So that kind of gives you your idea, you know, we're seeing most people are selling it at five. So if you want to try and be slightly cheaper than most of the market, what you'll want to do is you'll want to try maybe price maybe at four. Since we're kind of seeing that average is roughly about five bells. So we want to sit there and price it either at the average, so five bells, or maybe like I said, that one L lower, four L's. It's going to sell out a lot quicker. And one thing I will always suggest to people is if you find out that as soon as you stock it in, somebody's there buying, it's most likely it is too low. Because the issue comes up with if you're constantly being bought out before you have a time to restock, your vendor is gonna sit there empty. Showing empty vendors is not good for business. More people shop at places that constantly have their vendors filled, even if they have to spend an extra L or two, then having to constantly shop around and find places that have that item filled for, a few, for an L less or two. So always keep that in mind. So you wanna price it to where you can almost always keep a little bit in stock, but not too low that it's always gone or too high that it never sells. So what I always suggest is, say for instance, that one person that had their agave for two wells each, they're most likely gonna sell out really quickly because that is a really, that's a stellar, a stellar deal there. What I would suggest to them is start raising it by one L. When the sales kind of slow down and become more of just a regular sales speed, where they're always getting money from it, but not immediately, then that's a good place to stick by. Keep your price there, unless it slows down. But you also need to take a look. What are people currently making? What is popular at that time? Like right now, a lot of people are head over heels with all the Halloween stuff. So you have like all of these goodies right here that you see a lot of people are selling. So you want to keep in mind here, you need to sit there and kind of go with that market flow as well to make sure to always get sales. Now, a lot of people will try and kind of specialize. Like there are some people that will only brew alcohols and that's all they will do and sell or at least that's all they will sell. Or you have people who just specifically craft, like with the kids you can make and the tables that you can make, that those are very specific there and that that's what they're going to do. You can become specialized or if you kind of want to do a little bit of everything, you're going to need to kind of keep an eye on the market. Keep an eye on, like I said, what's popular. Like oddly enough right now, food wise, carrot cakes, apple pies, uh, and like vinegar and wine is highly popular. So if you were to make things like that now, you can almost always find a seller for them. Um, food wise, they're really, a lot of times most people look for either the highest EP or they look at price compared to EP. Now, if you're in a role play environment, that's going to change because if you're role playing, you look for different things than if you're just looking for um, like just random stuff to fill EP and things like that. So you always have to keep things in mind. I always suggest trying to go into the market with an idea of what you want to sell. If you want to sell a little bit of everything and so forth, like for me personally, I do a lot of secondary goods. You know, your butter, your sugar, your cocoa, 
things like that. I sell a lot of that. And that's a lot of times what is most popularly bought from my from my market is those secondary goods. Now I do have like baskets out, things like that, but most people know me for the secondary products. So like I said, again, you want to find that niche and you want to make sure to take a look at what's around you. Like for instance, you know, like this right here is my stall. We have a neighbor right next to me and a neighbor right here. If you take a look at what your neighbor is selling, now for some people that would be, it's going to be hard to do because we have some neighbors that kind of sell like a hodgepodge of things and it might overlap what you're selling. That's okay. But you want to make sure that you're not looking at your neighbor and saying, oh, they have this item for this price. Let me go down by half and price it that way. Because A, a lot of people are going to walk by. You might sell out really quickly, yes. But there are some people that, you know, it's not going to look good because you're competing with your neighbor, but in a bad way. You know, so you want to try and make the price around the same price or at most maybe one or two L's lower. So that way it's just that healthy competition. So you don't want to go to those extremes either. So a lot of our buying and selling is going to be etiquette in that. And one thing I've noticed a lot going on in chat is people complaining about others selling too low. Now you have to remember with DFS, with our secondary markets and that, even with like our main, the main market here, or it is supported by and owned by DFS themselves, the owners of DFS do not regu regulate the prices on the secondary market. It is effectively an open market. So I've even seen, I say this before, if you don't like the prices, either A, don't buy them, or if it is too low, flip it. Buy them out and resell at a higher price. You know, there's no need to complain and moan about it because most of our sellers, if they're selling it at a low price, either A, they're having a sale, B, they just need to get rid of their stock too quickly. I know with me, if I get overstocked on something, I'm going to put it out for sale. Just because I've been holding on to it for too lo so long, I have a ridiculously high amount. Uh, like one day I had a sale on meats where it was 1L per use. Because I had so much beef carcass, it was ridiculous. I had over a thousand crates. So, you know, you want to keep in mind on that one. And like I said, don't complain about it. Use it to your advantage. Make a couple L's off somebody. The buy, the seller is not going to complain because they got what they wanted out of it. You know, you find a beef crate a a 15 count beef crate for 10 L's buy it you can flip it and you can make a profit off it I will guarantee you that you you can at least double your money on that one so you know don't come there's no use complaining about it just use it to your advantage now, other than that, I think I've kind of covered, you know, like I said, I, I'm not here to tell you you have to do it this way because there are so many different ways of pricing and everything else that, you know, there is no right or wrong way, but this is just supposed to be some tips and tricks to help out to, you know, especially for our new farmers that, that are constantly joining us and everything else. So just keep that in mind. I do hope I was able to help you out with that. And I do look forward to you tuning in next time. Don't forget to hit the li that like button and that subscribe button to keep up to date on any future videos that we plan on putting out. Again, thank you and happy farming, guys.